And hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Ask Us Anything, live from the RV. And we uh, are just returning from a trip to uh, Michigan's Upper Peninsula, where we have been uh, enjoying a great time in the snow with about uh, 30 or so other RVers, and it has been awesome. It was great fun. It's like my favorite trip every year. As always, I want to explain, if this suddenly drops out, it's because the internet connection failed and uh, there's not much we can do about that. We are on a heck of a turnaround schedule here. So uh, we literally, literally just got back from uh, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. It was like a 720-mile round trip. You did the drive. And uh, we are now turning around and uh, got to fly out on an airplane tomorrow to Tampa, Florida. We need to be uh, in position for the Tampa RV show where we will be all this coming week and uh, hopefully we'll see many of you. Thank you guys. I see a bunch of thumbs up. Appreciate that. Uh, so if uh, Jennifer gets up and leaves, it's because you got packing to do. I got packing to do. Um, I can probably milk this and you stay can. online here and talk <laughs> you to can everybody. Pack in a minute I was and really half. busy. Yeah. You can pack in a minute and a half. Well, I take, what, two pair of shorts, a pair of jeans, some shirts. And everything's clean, ready to go. Everything's clean, ready to go. It's a miracle. I don't know it's how that miracle. happens. Yeah. I open the door and it's always clean in there. Um, so let me just, uh, first of all, we always like to say hi to the first person on. And it's uh, Davis, Tandy, and Buster. They were the first ones from Rochester, New York. And they say, it looks like you guys had a great time in the UT. Have uh, safe travels to Tampa. Well, thank you, guys. We had a great time. We went up uh, last Wednesday and up to uh, Paradise, Michigan. Now, if you hear that noise, that's the heater in the RV kicking on. And uh, we stayed up uh, from Wednesday through today, left this morning, uh, right after sunup. Uh, icy roads up there, snow-covered roads, not a bit of a problem anywhere uh, with driving this thing. This is the first time we've taken this Unity Leisure Travel Vans and uh, winter camping. And um, what did you say coming back today? I could not believe how warm it was inside this because I thought there's more space in here. And um, I expected to be cold. And if anything, it was really hot. It was. I mean... There were no complaints for staying warm. It was uh, 24 most nights, uh, and uh, it was 9 this morning, 9 degrees above zero. We, I turned it down once in the middle of the night, and you turned it down. Yeah. To, like, I turned it down to 67, and you turned it down. I mean, like the first night I brought, you know, flannel <laughs> bottoms and sweatshirt, and I thought, oh, man, I'm going to die in this. This is too much. I don't need all this. And, uh, yep, so we uh, we just had a, had a great time. This thing was really warm, much warmer than any of the uh, Class B road treks that we used to drive. This was really great. The batteries uh, worked awesome. We had, of course, uh, plug-ins, so we were plugged into electricity when we were at the campsite at Tequamanon Falls State Park, but we did a little bit of driving around and some hiking, and the batteries uh, stayed ch charged uh, for us to use on all day Wednesday and, and whenever we were out driving around. So we are thrilled with, uh, with this. We will have a video on uh, the YouTube channel here on Saturday, I think, if I can find time to edit it in Tampa, and uh, we show you everything. We had one setback on this trip, and it was all in my department, and it happened on Friday. I got the flu. I think it was the flu. It was, it was ugly. Let me just <laughs> not go any further than that, and I ended up back uh, on, uh, on this uh, rear, in the rear lounge here, uh, right back in there. I was all tucked in and covered flat up with blankets flat on my back. I lost pretty much the whole day Friday. Um, just miserable, but was as comfortable as can be as you can be anywhere. And if I'm going to be sick, I thought that worked out pretty well. I felt really good uh, being sick. <laughs> uh, so uh, our hope and prayer is that Jennifer now doesn't catch it as we fly to Tampa tomorrow and a busy week there at the Tampa Super RV Show. Uh, let me just give a quick uh, things, and then we'll get to some of the questions. Um, the Tampa RV Show opens uh, to the public on Wednesday. Tuesday is Industry Day. We'll be there with a lot of industry folks uh, checking things out, and then we will be there uh, all during the, the show week. People have uh, written us and said, hey, can we meet at this time or this place? And uh, what we are doing, because we don't know once we start shooting a story what what, how quick we can finish it or how long it'll take. But what we've done is set aside time each day to meet and greet folks. And uh, so we will be doing daily meet and greets 
at the Tampa Super V R Super R V show. What is it? Super Super R V show, I guess it is. Super show. <laughs> the Tampa R V show. Uh, from two to three PM. And we you can find us at the Leisure Travel Vans display. They're gonna let us use that as our gathering spot. Uh, they're kind of a sponsor here since we use one of their products, and uh, we hope to uh, to meet a lot of you. Uh, we will make sure that we have our schedule open and that we show up every day, um, Wednesday through Saturday. We will be there from 2 to 3 p.m. Also, there is a big party that you are invited to if you are anywhere near that show, and that is Thursday night, and that is at um, uh, on, on January 16th. Uh, from 6 p.m. on at a place called the Wing House. And the Wing House is located right next to the fairgrounds. And uh, we will be there. Uh, we'll have some um, uh, a little area set up to meet and greet folks. We'll be hanging out. There's food. There's drink. There's entertainment. There'll be lots of other YouTube bloggers and influencers there. It's the Tampa RV after the show party on Thursday. Uh, doors open 6 o'clock. January 16th, Thursday. So if you are Tampa, come. If you see us, I'll hand you an invitation if you ask for one at the show. But uh, that's it. So we are really looking forward to that. Whew, that's a lot of talking. <laughs> that is a lot it's of all talking. Up to you. I'm tired now. <laughs> I am tired. You should be tired. All that fresh air, the beauty of the snow. You know, I say this every year. Wasn't that one of the best campouts we ever had up there? Yeah. We, we have such was... a great tribe of uh, fellow travelers. They are awesome. It was fun uh, getting to meet new people and then seeing people that we've met in past years. It was uh, it was just it's just a really sweet time. How many folks did we have up there, and where think, were they from? I think did we you? had about thirty four people, and um, we I think we had eight states they came from. I was quite impressed. We had Linda who came from Maine. From Maine, and wow. uh, we basically we were Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, Indiana Wisconsin. Illinois, Wisconsin, and we Minnesota. had Missouri and Missouri. Yep. And um, we had another probably ten people canceled. You know how it is when there's storm is coming through. How the media now just goes hysterical. I mean, crazy. They're like shrieking. I was looking at headlines: unprecedented damage expected from this supposed ice storm and wind storm and snowstorm that hit uh, much of the central uh, Great Lakes region yesterday. It was nothing, nothing like they said. And, you know, and then you turn on the forecast the next day and they pretend like they never got hysterical about it. So they scared a number of people off who thought the weather was going to be and so bad. And people had legitimate reasons. Oh, yeah. So, you know, you know I'm, not, I'm not saying that, that uh, you know, they, you all got to make a decision on what you're safe uh, in right. weather-wise. But, and if they predict the, bad weather, that's pretty hard to venture out for a long drive. That's my point, though, is that the media is so bad everywhere, universally bad, and where they have decided local TV is the worst, and 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 local ra radio, but local TV has realized that people tune in to watch weather, so they'll say, you know, how much snow are we going to get? Details at 11, and then you'll tune in at 11 o'clock, and they'll say, there's a snowstorm in the future. How much storm or snow are we going to get? That's coming up a little later in the newscast, and so you stay and you wait, and they keep teasing it, and then they come to the weather, and they say, oh, it's just going to be a dusting of snow. Yeah, no, what did we hear up north? It was predicted zero to 12 inches? No, yeah. They, at one point, <laughs> they said anywhere from two to 11 inches I of snow. Somebody, somebody else said a foot, foot downstate. It was like ridiculous. And none of it was anywhere anywhere near accurate. So, but anyway, but the reason they do that, because Mike worked in television, half of the year is ratings, and you want people to, to watch. I remember one time I was doing a live shot out in the snow. And, uh, you know, they're screaming, shrieking, you know, it's the snow apocalypse, you know, and let's go live to Mike Weddle and he's standing on I-75 at Nine Mile. Mike, how bad is it? And I looked and I said, you know, it's really not very bad. It's <laughs> Oh, he got mad at me. He had a lot of trouble. He's I got always in more been trouble. difficult. Said, We're trying to get people to stay with the weather forecast. I'm like, you know, but so take. That ended him standing out. You almost have to learn how to be your own weather forecaster. Go to other web websites and follow it and, and guess. All that to say, we had great weather up there, and no problem. Uh, we had a dusting of snow yesterday. A couple and, inches. And we had snow covered um, icy roads. Our unit traveled great in it, and we had a great time. And thanks to all those who came, and uh, safe travels to you get back. Okay, I see lots of you checking in, and lots of you checking in early. 
Uh, let's go to Edward Varga, who uh, writes a question on his, and that's what we ask you always to do uh, when you are going to write a question so we know that that's a question. Or if it's a comment, do that in comment, comment and then I'll know. And uh, he says, uh, what is your schedule for the Tampa show? Turns out I'll be attending starting on Friday for the weekend. Wife looking forward to me being away <laughs> now that I retired. <laughs> go, go, get on it. <laughs> Uh, go see Mike and Jen. Uh, well, as we said at the top, Ed, we'll, we'll be at the Leisure Travel Vans booth uh, Friday, 2 to 3, Saturday, 2 to 3. And if you get there Thursday night, you're invited to that party as well. We'd love to see you. Uh, wow, road trick buddy. He's slipping. He's the fifth in line on the post. He's usually the first out there every week. But but we got him. He's got a, the best track record of any of you out there for being early on and saying hi. Uh, so that's good. Um, all right. Uh, a lot of you heading to the, uh, to the super show. Linda Ward says she'll be there. Linda, come to that party, uh, at the wing house. We'll see you there. Question in the RV industry. When, what month is the typical changeover from model year with the changes update incorporated into the RV? Looking forward to meeting you and Jenna at Tampa. Uh, well, this is a big scam to tell you the truth because, uh, I talked to somebody yesterday who was buying a, uh, a new rig that was advertised as a 2020, except it wasn't a 2020. The RV model was, quote, 2020, but it was really on a 2019 chassis. So uh, I say go with what the chassis is. That's what your insurance and your registration will say. So many people buy their rigs. They think they got a brand new one. They, they go to get their title and they look and it's titled a year older because that's what the chassis is. So the RV industry, they all make, you know, their RVs on a chassis. And uh, when you find one of those things, uh, you got to just sort of, uh, sort of go through and say, uh, hey, look at that. We had a super chat from uh, EC Corellius. Let's see if I can bring that up. Where are you here? Uh, I don't know if that shows up, but I'm looking for it. I have to go way okay. down. No. I'll find it. Wow. And it's a big one, a $14 super chat. Uh, I'll find it here. But anyway, um, so the changeover comes whenever they say. Uh, most of the time, it is uh, they st in, the, in, 20, in the fall of the year, they'll say what they're going to do in terms of their new models. Maybe they'll even release some floor pads. Really, uh, for most of the, the models, the 2020s are coming out now or it will be being delivered in the next few months. You will see 2020 models on display at Tampa. It's the first, it's the biggest of all the RV shows. There's a number of RV shows. There's probably 20 of them this weekend coming up. And we'll have them all listed, by the way, in our Wednesday podcast. But uh, most of the shows, they'll be showing for the first time, really, the 2020 models. Now, that's not saying that they're all going to be available to buy because the 2020 Sprinter chassis have been held up awaiting EPA approval of some engine specs and just some routine bureaucratic paperwork. But the result is there are no 2020 Sprinter chassis being built on right now. And uh, I hope that answers your question. But uh, yeah, you always want to say, what year is the chassis when you're going to buy? All right, here's that super chat from uh, E.C. Corzilius. Thank you for that. Hey, you two, we love our leisure. Must be They must have a leisure travel van so much, and it's all because of you. Wondering if you guys have the ducted air. We do and love it. Um, love you guys are awesome. Thanks for all you do. Well, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, this is the air condition is ducted, which is really nice. And the um, the uh, the the heat is is ducted on the on the floor because heat rises, right? So there's one that's uh, right. Uh, I don't know if I can show it here. Where is this down? I can't really under show the pantry. It. It's uh, it's uh, well, by where? the sink. It's right on a long pantry under the pantry. It's right that little square, right. It's a circle. Right, I can't get it right there, kind of. Kind of. Kind of. See, enough. right Good there. Enough. That's where the duct is there, and there's also one in the bathroom, which is really nice when you get up in the middle of the night. We like that. Or a you lot. take a shower. We or you be take warm a shower. In there, and then and if then you the, want the heat out, you leave the door ajar. And the air is adducted up there, mm -hmm. and it really Same must. Room. It makes a difference, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's it's good. Uh, uh, well, thank you uh, uh, for the uh, for the super chat. Now let me go way back here and get some of these questions. Uh, how does your family feel about you both uh, being on the road for so long? 
question from Hamilton, Ontario, from Debbie Jones. Well, we can get in a lot of trouble <laughs> <laughs> for being gone so much. What do you mean? Well, you can't just they'd say like that. us You're home. Yeah. They'd like us home all the time. Yeah? Yeah. So, uh, but they're understanding that uh, this is what we do. Yeah. Um, this is what we do. I mean, some people play bingo and some people babysit. Some people play golf. Some people play golf. Some people watch TV, go to are, sporting events. Yep, and or some people we are bowlers. Taken up pickleball yet? We, we can take out pickleball. That's the fastest growing sport in America. I know pickleball is. Yeah, uh, and we RV, and our families know that, and they know that we love doing this, and uh, and they all do that as well. At least two it's, of our kids like two out of three like to like yep. to camp. Uh, leisure travel unlocks. What video editing software do you use? I use Final Cut Pro. Uh, I used to use that, but I switched to Adobe Premiere Pro, which is uh, which is probably uh, the standard now for most uh, most editing for uh, for video. Uh, let's see what else do we have. Uh, I'm kind of going through here, um, looking for you guys to looking for the word question. That's what you're doing. You're looking I'm for looking that for word. Looking for questions. Yes. And so I, if you if I if you've written the question and you don't have question in front of it, There's uh, a I don't have. I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm talking to you and I'm scrolling your comments over here. He's and reading and talking. I'm reading and talking, so uh, it gets it gets kind of crazy. Chris is reminding everybody if you're at Tampa to catch us at the Leisure Travel Vans booth at the Super Show. Um, we will be there every day, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Every day, Wednesday through Friday, uh, from 2 to 3 p.m. And uh, then that uh, RV after party on Thursday night, if you're there early. I will mention that again, because I know we've got new people uh, coming up. Uh, okay, I have a 2018 Pleasureway XLMB and would like to get a better radio system than what is in it currently. Do you have any suggestions? Um, look on, the, um, look on the, the, the channel here under the Find the Playlist for Gadgets. I think that's under Gadgets. Uh, and I did a replacement of the Spritter chassis that we, or the Spritter radio that we used to have. And I put a new uh, super duper radio in. I can't remember the brand name and uh, loved it. And then when we sold that uh, Class B, uh, I also sold the radio. I pulled the radio out and sold the radio separately. But you can find that and maybe Chris can find it. And uh, we'll put a link up in the comments here for you. But uh, uh, Chris is uh, our video uh, guru, our YouTube uh, consultant, expert, editor, buddy, team member, <laughs> and uh, he uh, does all of our uh, graphics works, and he'll probably put a link on there as well. But uh, we really like that radio. I can't remember. It was Alpine. It was an Alpine radio, and uh, it just did a great job. You liked that radio, didn't mm -hmm. you? Yeah. And then... I didn't keep it in this 2019 because I have a new, whole new entertainment system in the 2019 Sprinter uh, chassis, so which we love a lot. What wind conditions app do you use? I don't. I don't use an app for wind conditions at all. <laughs> Eight also, years. What I've parts never, of the country? What I, part of the country you live in? You know where wind is a problem. I do check the uh, the weather, you know, as we travel, and I always take a look. Uh, and uh, all my apps, all my weather apps will give me any weather warnings. Um, we have them screaming at us all the time, uh, but I don't have a particular app for the winds and have never, never felt them bad. We were a little concerned about the Mackinac Bridge being closed, which they do sometimes in high winds, or they require an escort, which they did on Wednesday. They had an es you had to have an escort on anything you know, bigger than a, a passenger car. I think car. it was Thursday. It was Wednesday. Maybe, oh, it was Wednesday. It was Wednesday, yeah. yeah. We went up Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I don't I don't have an app for just the wind. I don't need one. They all tell you that. So just look at the weather and, and you can see what, what happens. Uh, uh, Jennifer, is the Leisure Travel Van easy to drive? Yeah. It is easy to drive. Yeah. It's real, real simple. Uh, it's great. Here's somebody that uh, wants to, where is that after party? It's at a place called The Wing House. The Wing House, and that is, let me see if I can, if it shows it right here. Um, I think it's in here. Is there an address? Yeah, there it is right there. Uh, it's uh, 5003 US 301. 
it's like right across the street from where the Tampa show is, the Tampa RV show. So the wing house, and uh, you can actually come across earlier. from the Farmington entrance. Yeah, from the Farmington from the fairground. Oh, entrance. fairground! Oh, cross better from get the my fairground entrance. New glasses. I still can't see. Yeah, it's pretty small. It is. That's so right. Ooh, I can just do that. Dude. Oh, geez, do that. That's pretty cool. There it is. Oh. <laughs> Right across from the fairground entrance is where the wing house is for that after party. And uh, I think you'll have a great time there. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, looking to sell my Class B RV, how do I know its value? Don't trust a dealer. <laughs> Don't call up a dealer and ask them. Uh, you can check, you know, the blue books and stuff, but they aren't very good on uh, RVs. You really want to do some research. Do a search on the year of your RV and go, you know, so say you have a 2017 um, Road Trek uh, RS Adventurous or CS Adventurous. Check 2017 CS Adventurous sale price or for sale. And you'll find other people who are advertising them at different areas around the Internet. Also look at RV Trader. That's a publication. You might want to buy it, buy one copy of it. They list a whole bunch of them and look for others of your uh, mileage and year. But a dealer, just like in a car, will short offer you because they make their money on, you know, cleaning it up and reselling it uh, considerably higher than what they'll pay you. Uh, and what they sell it for is what you should be able to sell it for to a private owner and maybe even even a little more. So uh, so don't, don't just take it to a dealer and trust the dealer because they will lowball you every time. Um, Let's go through and look for some other questions. Uh, where did Bo's name come from? Is it a shortened version of something else? Sorry if you already answered this question. Well, our last dog, his name was Tybo, and we called him Ty. And so someone suggested, why don't you call this elk hound Bo? So we kind of like the name Bo. We, we like the name Miles and uh what else? Lewis. We were thought of Lewis. I like Lewis, but I was afraid if I named him Lewis, Mike would get a second dog, so we could have Lewis and Clark. And I didn't want two dogs. Yeah. So those are kind of names that we liked. But and didn't um, and we also we put Miles and Lewis and and Bo and about a couple of others up online on our Facebook group, and we had people vote as well when kind we of got a group him. Project. And they all they all chose the name Bo as well. So Bo was a good name. Yep. Yeah. And somebody said, oh, you shouldn't name him a single syllable, or it sounds like the word N-O, but he knows the difference he between Bo and no. Bo knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty good. Have any, any issues with the tank level gauge? Uh, no, none, you know. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I think you mean the, the, how full the tanks are? Is I that would what think you mean? that's what. Is that's what you mean by that? I think that. Not yet. They all, none of them are very accurate, uh, you know, because they get gunk on them, particularly the black tank that always gets gunk on them. One of the things that this unit has, and many other RVs have, is a clean-out uh, valve where you can basically hook up water after you empty the black tank. You can then hook up the hose there and run it through, and it'll really flush out uh, any of the gunk that's left behind. <laughs> And, uh, and that's really nice. And sometimes that helps get the stuff off the little sensors. But none of the black gauges work very well after a, a season or so. And it gets tough. Uh, Jenny Morris says, I loved uh, uh, the video on how to plan your trips. I wish I could get my husband to plan with me. Uh, we just That was our video of the week that went up uh, yesterday. And if you haven't seen that, it's here on the channel. And we did one. Remember, we asked you last week right here uh, if you want us to show because we were and do some planning mm -hmm. and they wanted it and we did it well i wish your husband would help plan with her because that's half the fun to talk you must do a really good job planning because he trusts you to do it yeah yep yeah. uh it's it's good uh kyle are you folks going to the fort myers rv show or is tampa that much better and worth the miles and heavy traffic yes it is it's a uh, about 18 times bigger than the fort myers show <laughs> for one <laughs> Uh, you know, and uh, my mother always said to me, I'm happy as long as those wheels are turning. Well, uh, yeah, I would not. Uh, and we we tend to go to three or four shows a year and just the big ones. And we're even going to try and whittle that down. But if we only went to one all year, 
it would be a toss-up between Hershey, California, and Tampa. So usually we go to those three. But uh, Tampa, well, let's just put it this way. What was the temperature this morning? It was nine degrees. And what's the temperature? It was nine degrees in Paradise. Nine degrees in Paradise, Michigan, in the UP, where we were camping. And what's the temperature tomorrow in Tampa? 84. 84. So which one which would you go to? Which is perfect for you. Yeah. I'm going to wear shorts and a t-shirt again, a short sleeve shirt. This is awesome. I can't wait. Uh, so that's, uh, that's good. Uh, let's, Robert says, uh, how much do you budget for one year of travel? How much do you budget for a year of travel? Uh, we don't. We are not normal people <laughs> because this has turned into a job. Yeah. Uh, this is now a, our profession, you know, doing all this stuff. And, uh, if, if you're just tuning in, you know, we do a podcast, we do the YouTube videos, we do a blog, we do a newsletter, we write a series of travel guide books. So this is our job and um, this is what we, you know, probably, and we have six people kind of working with us, six, seven people, um, and they help us as part of our team. But, uh, you know, I get that question a lot from people who want to just sell everything and live full time and that's not the way I want to live. And you have to think how I don't much want to live that way. How much do you eat? What how what where do you buy your clothes? How far do you want to travel? What do you want to see? You know, do you you know, it, it, it's you. It's it's kind of what do you think you need? I mean, if you are doing this to save money, don't be well, you, unless you're very content living in um, you know, uh, tenement campgrounds which is truly the way many campgrounds look in, the, in this country. Uh, you, could, you can find free places to stay in Boondock. That's our favorite choice. But um, if you're doing this, you know, to save money, it, it, it's, it's, it's not a lifestyle I want. That I have to count every penny because, you know, do I have enough gas to go or a fuel money to drive 200 miles? Or what if I spend $35 a night for a, a place to stay here? And, and that's, do I want to stay at a boondocking place that I can only stay 12 hours and then I got to move and, you know, and keep relocating? And, now, some people like this kind yeah. of lifestyle. You know, we don't. We're here to travel and enjoy and see as much as we can. And then in the process, we report. But Yeah. And then what do you want to see? Because there's fees to get into different places. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to go out and... Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah, and, and there are places, there are other websites and, and uh, people who, you know, che- how to RV for cheap and all that stuff. And um, that's that's just not, that just doesn't appeal to us. That's not how I so want to spend So come to us if things. they want to waste money, right? If you want to waste money, <laughs> come and put says, I am really good at wasting money, which, uh, which, which I am. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, overall, I don't think that, I guess we do probably, do we spend more on the road than we're at home? We do because we... Personally, we tend to eat out more. We like to eat out. Well, it's sometimes you're. It's cheaper to live at home for us. Yeah, it's cheaper to live at home. That's including you know paying all your utilities. Um, well, why it shouldn't be cheaper? It's, you know, it shouldn't be. Well, I can bargain. Get a freezer. You know, there's just different ways you shop. Yeah, we tend to eat seldom eat out when we're at home. Um, yeah, I, it's, I would say it costs just about as much if you really added it all up. Um, you know, it probably costs a little bit more because if we stayed at home, we wouldn't have the cost of being on the road. And there are people who who love to tell you how to get by as cheaply as possible. It depends on what you want to eat. Yeah, that's good. How many days do you average on the road? Um, Two-thirds of the year. Two-thirds of the year, 80% sometimes. That's what I think we were last year, 80% of the time. Uh, that's good. Uh, I'm sorry, but I didn't hear your answer about your New Mexico registration. Um, it's Michigan registration. Uh, I did have New... I had New Mexico plates. I bought this in, in New Mexico. That's where we bought it, at a dealer in New Mexico. And then we since have gotten Michigan plates on it, which is our, our permanent uh, addresses in Michigan. So... And I didn't see any earlier questions, so I don't know if it was if it was asked earlier. But um, we have Michigan plates on this now. Uh, hello, Donna from Buffalo, peacefully lounging in my Unity twin bed at Edisto State Park, South Carolina. Love the sound of the waves. Oh, oh nothing better than waves. I, I do miss the waves. That's why we'll be heading to the Gulf Coast 
after we come back from Tampa. We got to fly to Tampa and then fly back, and then we'll we'll be home for a couple of weeks. We'll be home got for a couple of weeks. Couple more things we yeah. got to do. Having issues with our gray tank gauge showing two dots, even when we know it's empty. Is there anything we can use in the tank to clean it? Uh, there is stuff. There's some sensor cleansers that you can do. You can Google that uh, and uh, look for how to clean the gray tank in an RV. Usually, just uh, what I have done, what, we've never really had problems with the gray tanks, but no. but on all of our tanks, I like to fill them up before I empty them. So if I've got, you know, three quarters uh, or a quarter of the gray tank topped off, you know, a lot of that soapy residue and it can kind of cock. I like to fill that all the way up before I empty. I'll run, uh, I'll run whatever fresh water I have stored in it through the toilet, and then I'll run it uh, also through, the, you know, in the black tank, and then I'll run it also a bunch of it in the gray tank, just so that it kind of fills up that tank and it flushes it out better. And if I understand properly, I think it's toilet paper that gets hooked in the black tank that gives it a false reading. Toilet paper and well, I would think toilet paper is what they say, and then the gray tank. I'm trying to think. I guess the grease, because I can't imagine you letting garbage, you know, yeah, lettuce leaves. Grease, you know, whatever you you're put. You're careful down how you rinse your dishes. But uh, the best tip I have is always um, before you empty any of your tanks, your black tank or your gray tank, fill it up with whatever water you can, so it's a filled full tank. And there's not truth to what they used to say, putting ice cubes. Our friend uh, James from the Fit RV did a test on that. Drove around. It was really good. He got a clear tank. He got a video on it, and it really didn't help much. It didn't help well, much. It sounds like it would work. Sounds like it would work, <laughs> but it, it didn't. All right. A question now from uh, David. Uh, he says, you mentioned a couple weeks ago it's against the law to leave a pet in the RV. Where can we find a list? Well, David, I also mentioned that I would have a post on the blog, and I did. <laughs> If you go to RVLifestyle.com, now you'll have to scroll down because it's a couple of weeks old. We have new content every day, but we have a story on the blog that lists, uh, and I think it was, it might have even been a week ago Monday, so maybe two weeks, you know, look from the last two weeks, it's there on the blog, RVLifestyle.com, and uh, we had a post on just that. Of, I think 30-some states have varying laws wow. about leaving a dog that is a lot or of a states. pet in an RV, Oof. and um, basically the laws that hold the people harmless if they smash out all your windows to rescue your dog. And some states not only do that, but they'll charge you a fee and it can get really sticky. So, uh, but check that post out. It's, uh, it's on the blog, rvlifestyle.com. So what about, it's over 50, 50. Yeah. So, and it's growing careful. every time. Yeah. Now, if you have a list, I wouldn't count on, you know, you better check that state. <laughs> what about, what about medical? What do you have? And what do you uh, recommend? I will have medical for the next three years when I retire, and then uh, it'll take me to 59. Um, we have Medicare, so we're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> Medicare so you've and a check, supplement. Check the coverage that you've got to see, right. just like you don't go out of the country without making sure you have health insurance, because your health insurance generally does not cover you if you go out of the country. So make sure it'll cover you when you're in another state as well. Yep. Um, yeah, and I think you got to be 62 to get Medicare, but that is, we've been just delighted with our Medicare, and we have a uh, supplement, and every supplement's different depending on where you live. We happen to have the, is it ARP? The yeah. A, yeah, we've had that for a few years. And Some of the supplements you like to recommend that you look around because you can get silver sneakers for free. Yeah, right? I, I love silver sneakers. It's a, it's a exercise ARP used program. to have it, and then they trimmed their budget and got rid of it, and if it weren't so much work to find another company i would yeah yeah that's good uh okay neil says please tell Teresa. Teresa, we hope you get better Teresa, you get better now she's been very ill and <laughs> i'm sorry i don't know what you had Teresa. if that's that flu i i don't know what i had whether it was the flu but it lasted really about all, 24 hours yeah about 24 hours i Friday was a washout up on, it was so tough. You had to go out for dinner with everybody. I missed going I, out for dinner. I had a, oh, I'm sorry. You, I, I had a really nice time. Yeah. <laughs> I was sorry you weren't there. Well, I, I didn't want to, you know, I didn't know what it was. I didn't want to infect everybody. No, but then I woke up. to be around you. I woke up yesterday morning and I felt great. So, Teresa, I hope you do too. I hope you do too. And I'm biting my fingernails. And she's in the panhandle. Uh, so, that's great. Uh, G. Price. What Wi-Fi booster did you settle on? Wondering about the WeBoost RV package and which antenna, or is there something better? 
Um, I have an answer to that this today, but yeah, we have the uh, uh, we boost whatever their current one for RVs are is. It's got the little black, looks like a little tiki torch antenna, and it's up on my back ladder. If you look at some of the pictures of our RV and our YouTube channel here and our videos, you'll see that it's their most current. I want to say RVX, whatever it is, but it's their current one for RVs. There is, uh, it connects, you know, they they run some wires, the folks at Leisure, that, so I have, I can connect the antenna up there that's hidden already, pre-wired, comes out my entertainment concept, or console, and then there's a secondary antenna, which I have in the kitchen, in the galley area, and that's right next to a, a MiFi, uh, a little jet pack from Verizon that will boost cellular as well. So it's been great for us. We've had uh, had a great uh, great system. Um, looking forward to getting the Unity this summer, full-time RVing. Hope to see you at the Tampa RV Show. We hope to see you too. Again, remember, we'll be at that show doing a meet and greet every day, three, uh, 2 to 3 p.m. at the Tampa RV Show and uh, at the Leisure Travel Vans booth. And uh, we think it's good. Um, do you fi have any problem finding dump stations or refilling your rig with propane or water during the winter months? Uh, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, we don't fill it with water because it's winterized, right? So we don't do that, but we do fill it with propane. Uh, my local RV dealer uh, in our near our Michigan home, I go over there and fill up the tank. And uh, or if we're on the road, some ga a lot of gas stations. Gas stations, a lot of the the flying Trucker. J. Flying J, I think Where it is. Go. Pilot, yep. Uh, sometimes loves. Well, most many loves have a dump station you can use. Uh, we did use our toilet in the. Um, sounds terrible to say, but at, you know, in the winter, you flush it with antifreeze. And I will. Uh, I think their dump station is open in the winter at A and S and uh, A and S RV Center here in Auburn Hills, Michigan. Might as well give them a shout out, because I want to take this over and I'll empty that out there uh, after we get back from Tampa. So it works out pretty good. Uh, Michael Shore, do you have 30 amp service at your home? Is it worth installing? Yeah, it is. I do. Uh, we're plugged in now, and it keeps all my batteries topped off and warm. And uh, uh, I sometimes come out and use this as an editing studio. I, I, if, if we're sitting in our driveway, it's like like a little man cave or she cave. You no, know, it's <laughs> she shed, she shed or a man cave. Yeah. We come out here a lot. We use it yeah. surprisingly a lot in our driveway. You know, driveway. if you're still working and you can't get away that often, it's kind of fun just to come out and sit in it. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's great. Hey, uh, Ray Jones is reminding everybody, give us a life, thumbs up. Thank you, Ray. Give us thumbs up, uh, push that icon. And uh, don't forget, if you haven't subscribed, uh, we would really appreciate it if you guys would subscribe. 316 of you watching now, 105 have given us a thumbs up. And we appreciate that. If uh, more of you can do that, that is uh, is great. Uh, Jesse uh, Vertz says, my husband's on dialysis, so our travel's going to have to be based on days and dialysis centers. I've heard several people who do that, and they travel around, and uh, they have a great time. Um, and you guys can do it. And uh, I'll be, uh, I, I wish you the luck. That's, it's, that's a challenge you got for a while. I know that. Uh, all right, looking on here. Um, uh, oh, gosh. I've kind of moved through really quick. I see there's little conversations going on, and I want to be nosy and read them. But uh, <laughs> uh, please uh, type in question if you have a question at the top of it, and that's good. Uh, Karen, thank you for your honesty about the cost of RV living. We'll be retiring in a few years, and I doubt I'll be able to live the RV life. Uh, Karen, I, I, I'm thinking that we need to do an episode. That, on how you can how you can be a park host. Yeah. How you can do some work on the road. Yeah. Find different jobs so that the, you know, add to your income. Um, but you know, there's, there are, it's been so romanticized, particularly as all these young folks have gotten involved with it. And, and I've got a great blog post. I'm going to try and interview the couple that wrote it. Uh, but, you know, they, they're all putting all these pictures of them standing on. We talked about this last week, standing on the roof of their RVs, their hands up in the air. Or, you doing, do that yoga, all the time, or yoga. doing yoga poses on the top of their RV. But, um, you know, there's all these beautiful pictures, the Instagram pictures of everybody up there on the RV. And, gosh, it's not, uh, you know, it is a wonderful life. We do this because we love it. 
but it is a stressful life because, you know, there are a lot of things that, you know, you don't know every day. Where are we going to stay? What should I look at? Where's the nearest supermarket? You know, how do I know whether it's a good restaurant? And you can use Yelp. You can do research, but you spend a lot of your day look doing research. Where's the supermarket? And uh, where's the best campground? Where's the best place we can boon down? And then sometimes the campground isn't all that it appears to be. A lot that happens. And a lot of campgrounds are just... Like I call them, you know, uh, trailer tenements, and they really are not very neat and clean. And you're right next to everybody, and you know, it's they're, they're you know, you really uh, you need to look at this with a sober eye because full time people. I'm going to sell everything in full time. Well, go try it first. Make sure it's for you, and that you find the way that you like to RV. And for and, us, that's and why I don't want to don't throw water on somebody's dream. Try it for a year. Try it for a year. Yeah. And then if you like it, you can do it too. Yeah. Or do it three. But but I, I, I kind of cringe, don't you, when you see people say, I'm going to sell my house, my sticks and bricks, and I'm going to hit the road. Well, I hope you've had a lot of experience doing it because, you know, it's 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 not as glamorous as those Instagram pictures sometimes portray it. Uh, don't get us wrong. We, we love it. We share, but we try and be honest with you about it as well. And I think, you know, one of the things is expenses. If you think that you can save money living in an RV and have a, a rather a comfortable lifestyle, uh, think again, because it is costly out there on the road. Now, there's a lot of people that uh, post how they spend their money. At least we've had a few folks that have yeah, shared. Yeah, a lot of people do. And there's a how lot of they budget. That, yep, yep, that's good. Adventures in Xanadu, Michigan friends here. What program do you use to live stream and what camera for live streaming? Looks like we've got some competition coming, Jen. Yep. Uh, welcome to the club. Uh, we use, uh, I use a program called eCam, which is I'm using right here that lets me put those your questions up like that. And uh, I'm using the camera that is in my brand new 16-inch uh, MacBook Pro. And I'm also using the built-in microphone with a little bit of sound processing on it. Uh, so it works out pretty good. Uh, and that's uh, that's good. Hey, we got a new, uh, we got a super chat. Another super chat. Woohoo! We're cleaning up. This is from uh, Steve Biddo. Thank you, Steve, for a $20 super chat. Uh, hi from the Poconos. Road Trek seems to be up and running. Any thoughts? Well, have you seen any Road Treks up and running today? Lately, I don't know. Uh, we're hoping that there will be at Tampa, and we'll be able to find out more. Um, they don't communicate real well about what their plans are. The last we saw is they were planning to start building them in limited numbers in October, and they hope to be delivering them to dealers uh, after the first of the year. Uh, now, that would be building on inventory that they had in stock so those would have been 2018 chassis for the large part so so steve those would be uh, older uh, already you know two-year-old technology on, on most of them and uh, then i think they're stuck with everybody else if they're looking at sprinters because nobody's getting 2020 chassis right now um, those are probably not going to be released the last we've heard until april to most of the manufacturers they do have a ford transit that they want to add to their lineup. They were showing that before they went out of business and they were showing it in Elkhart in October. So I think they call it the Haven and I would bet that we will see that in Tampa. But, but uh, we will find their display in Tampa and we'll stop by and get some video and let you know what we can, uh, what you, we can, uh, we can find. Uh, oh, look at this. What? Captain America says, I'm glad you're not grandparents. Mine spends quality time with me. You all are selfish. <laughs> okay, thank you for that. Uh, and uh, we made Teresa's day, though, so we're we're glad with that. Uh, love you guys. I have jetpack, but haven't figured out how to use the Wi-Fi booster as yet. Uh, Janice, it's just a matter of turning it on, and it will kind of boost this stuff, and your jetpack will pick up that signal, and it will be pretty good. Uh, Levi Young, how do you guys wash your RV? Well, we wash it, uh, God does for us most of the time. We are not with really rain. good at washing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I'd love to wash it right now. It's it's hard. you got to find a truck wash for it. And and those can be rather challenging to find. So we need a truck, ch a truck wash to find. And uh, uh, 
and we've got to find a truck wash. It's got a bunch of road slush on it from driving up in snow and ice and, you know, salt on the road debris. But uh, I got to find a truck wash and we'll probably wash it uh, if we can before we head south in a couple, three weeks. If not, we'll, as soon as we get where it's not below freezing, we'll, uh, we'll wash it there. And then we uh, usually have it detailed once or twice a year as well. Um, here's somebody uh, says, my husband is on dialysis too, but we have uh, hemodialysis at home. And in the RV, when we're on the road, we just have to check in with the doctor twice a month thanks to, uh, uh, I guess that's a program that they have called NX Stage. Hmm. So Janet, I, I forget who the lady was that was talking about that a little while ago, but hopefully she uh, she sees that. Uh, do you take your bikes on every trip and where on the RV do you carry them? Not every trip. We didn't carry them up to the woods. Uh, we uh, will often take them when we're going to be someplace where we can use them. Uh, we carry them on the back. There's a, a hitch, a three-inch bumper hitch, and we've got a bumper uh, hitch mount, a Hollywood rack mount that we that we got from e-bikes, uh, from uh, Rad Power Bikes, and we'll put them on the back. I'll put a, I bought a cheap little motorcycle cover at uh, Walmart, I think, and that covers both bikes, and you can bungee that in place and keep them safe. I take the batteries out when we transport them and uh, keep them inside the uh Keep side the inside the RV. All right, uh, let's see. Um, I'm looking for questions. There we go, Marshall. I know that Mike was a former broadcast and uh, written journalist. How did you convince your wonderful, informative co-host to become on camera? Well, Jennifer was my producer for a while. When we did, we started doing a lot of freelance, and we traveled all over the country. And she became a producer. But how did I talk to you into going on camera? Because you did not want to go on camera. You just needed me on camera. So yeah. I did. And you, you, do you like going on camera? Sure. Yeah, I think you do. I, you know, you seem to, I think she does a great job. Um, but you didn't have any, did you have any reservations? Not really. But I was behind camera, then the next thing I knew was in front of the camera. I'm trying to think of the first one I did. I think I just turned the camera on. But you say this, and you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, and it's it's really fun. It's so much more fun to do uh, something with the person that you love the most in life um, as your partner. So it's pretty good. Sometimes we have disagreements, right? We get a little cranky. Sure, we're bound to. Yeah, but most of the time, we get along real well. Planning your trips. What program apps have you found most useful? We do short trips. Michelle, look at the video we put up yesterday, and we show you everything. Books, online stuff. It's right here on the uh, YouTube channel, and you'll see it all. Uh, what do you use for blind spots on your rig? I get this question every week. Uh, Cub, C-U-B. It's, uh, it's an aftermarket product that we had installed, um, gosh, right after we got this, uh, this rig in late spring, and it works great. It's uh, got a couple of, like, infrared uh, little gadgets on the side that pick up anybody who's, uh, you know, in my blind spot. It flashes a little on a little light on the uh, on the cross post and up by the dash and works great. You like it and it'll beep if you are trying to turn into that lane. It'll warn you ahead of time. But it's called Cub, uh, C-U-B. And we've talked about that before. Um, and uh, I think a lot of people who have picked up uh, 2019 and newer sprinters because the blind spot on class B pluses or class C's uh, the spinner didn't include it on there it's not standard because they're a little wider and so you uh, you want to have blind spot somebody earlier on I wanted to point that out <laughs> I'm going to show you this let me see if I can go find this here uh, I had one question and I got to ask you Jennifer is that true because I'm having good but it said where was it this was a funny one there we go Ed says Mike you look exhausted. Do I look exhausted? Well, you probably do look tired because you were you just getting over being sick. I was sick. And you drove home today. Yeah. Uh, and it, it, was a, it was a 367 mile drive back from where we were. But I am a little tired, I guess, because and it's going to be a long week. But uh, I thought I looked pretty good for considering how much we've been up today. So, uh, Considering how sick you were on, uh, was it Friday? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Question, Jen, do you still use the bed in a bag system for the Murphy bed? Good, very timely question. Right. Uh, I had switched to sheets and a blanket, and then when we went up on our winter camp out, I said, let's take our sleeping bag. And we love the sleeping bag. In fact, I, I think I might keep the sleeping bag. It's the RV Super Bag, and there's a video here in the channel about that, and we have a king size one. And Once we have just, two yeah. twins. And we have two twins. That's how much we liked it. We liked yeah, that bag. We, before, when we've gone winter camping, we've taken the two twins because we didn't make it into a king size bed. We left it open so that the heat could come up. But this time, we got the big mattress, and I said, let's just. Uh, Let's just take our sleeping bag, and then I, we can throw the other blanket on top if it's not warm enough. Hey, I got a, I got equal time to that person who called us selfish and asked the question about grandparents. This is our granddaughter. This is uh, Quinoa. Uh, and she says, hey, <laughs> I love you. Oh, choking me up. Well, hey, I'm the grandkid. L love my grandkid. Wait, 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 go. Here she goes. I love my grandparents, and they are awesome when they are home. They spend as much time with us as possible. When they can't be here physically, they're always checking in. That's our granddaughter. Thanks for sticking up for your gramps, uh, Wawa. And grandma. Uh, that's great. Yeah. I'm, I'm surprised you're watching us on a Sunday night. And we're going to see her tomorrow because she watches Bo when we're gone. Wawa and Rachel are going to take Bo. Wawa, her sister Rachel, they will watch Bo. And because uh, actually we have a big dilemma because we need to move. We need to sell our big house and we don't want we have a great deal of confusion because our youngest son wants us to move to one side of the state. And if we stay here, we're by Wawa and Rachel and our other son is down in Georgia. So we're kind of everywhere. <laughs> and then we have a son over here in, in Kalamazoo with uh, two of our grandkids over there. Yeah. So it so gets that's very complicated. So yeah. having an RV is good. Yeah. We can kind of go between them all. Uh, it's funny how people just want to jump on and be negative always. So uh, thank you, Wawa, for sticking up for your grandma and grandpa here. Uh, Deacon St. John, what's the next RV show you'll be visiting? Thanks. Love you guys. Uh, Tampa, tomorrow. And maybe you mean after that. Uh, the next one we'll be visiting is in April, and that's at the Super B RV show. Uh, all small motorhomes out in Phoenix in the uh, middle of April. So we'll be out in Phoenix in the middle of April. It'll be nice and warm there. We go to that every year. We love that show. It's put on by La Mesa RV, and uh, we love those guys. They're really, uh, they've become really good parts of our uh, RV lifestyle family, and um, we bought um, the RV we're in now from their Albuquerque, New Mexico store, and uh, we'll be out there in um, April. At uh, That's the next one we're doing. That's all small motorhomes, and that's in the middle of April. We'll tell you more about that after we Do get I down to Tampa. Do I say we'll be visiting one of our grandkids while we're there? And we'll be visiting <laughs> one of our grandkids when we're there who's moving to Phoenix, as Zachary is. So there. Got to let everybody know that. Uh, <laughs> uh, how precious that your granddaughter commented. Love it. Any plans on visiting Rockport, Texas? Well, I don't know where Rockport is, Charlotte, but yes, we obviously we're going to go through Texas as we drive the Gulf Coast. And then through Texas, all the way through, we would love to stop by Big Bend a little bit and uh, either on the way to uh, Phoenix or the way back. So um, the chances are we'll be close by there. And that's that'll be in April, early April, we'll be heading out that way. And uh, we'd love to see you. Uh, I want to say is uh, Carla in Rhode Island, thanks for the inspiration. We bought our motorhome in November. Can't wait to get on the road. Oh, I bet you do. I bet you could be. Uh, that's great. That is awesome. And uh, Adventures in Xanadu moved to Ludington. We have a pretty nice state park here. We know you do. That's the Hofmeister Park right there near Muskegon and uh, Ludington. Um, gosh, we love, uh, and Ludington State Park is its own park. Beautiful, right on Lake Michigan. That is a great area, and we do like it. Um, what did you use to cover the solar panel when it snows? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, if the snow got gets really thick, I will go and uh, kind of gently uh, brush it off. But most of the time, you know, we get it off or as we're driving around, it, uh, it blows off. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, you don't get a lot of efficiency this, at this northern latitude in the wintertime anyway with solar. So uh, by the time we get down south where we really depend on solar to charge our lithium batteries, uh, um, you know, it's all melted. So... Uh, I'd, I'd leave it unless it gets really heavy, and then I'll, I'll brush it off. 
Well, I don't want to cut things short, but it's uh, it's Ooh, almost an hour, time. and uh, we have to uh, have to get in and start packing. We're going to be up till late tonight. We got to get uh, Bo uh, packed up and uh, dropped off at our granddaughter's house tomorrow, and then we hit the airplane for Tampa. I think we're going to do a couple live show live reports from Tampa. I doubt whether we will be on next Sunday night because we will be flying back from Tampa Sunday night. So we will be on an airplane someplace, and they don't like us doing live shots from an airplane. Although it would be kind of fun. Uh, but I think we will do uh, a YouTube live on Saturday afternoon, uh, maybe around 3 p.m. Eastern time, Saturday afternoon on YouTube. We'll put it up uh, in our Facebook groups and all of that stuff, and you'll be able to, to find it. And, uh, and it would go there. Um, all right, let's see if we can just a couple quick questions. Uh, this is an important one. Brandon, have you guys used Rover after the questionable time before? Um, no, no, we haven't. We haven't. <laughs> and and uh, see, we talk about, I guess we, why don't you give them a quick recap of that for those? Well, we used a Rover just for overnight. And uh, do I say that why we used Rover? We were covering football games for our grandson. Yes, we were going to our Georgia. Our, I went to every one of my grandson's football well, we games, four. but two. Well, <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Yeah. It, yeah. Gee, we I'm getting drove right. four hours up to Georgia to watch our grandson play. And um, we needed to make arrangements for both because it was too hot to leave him in the RV. And we used a Rover sitter that we weren't, didn't feel real good about him. And he was only there overnight. And then when we uh, picked him up, he yeah. was a bit of a mess. He was limping. He had diarrhea. He and he just, vomited. He vomited, and we didn't feel good about it. Yeah, not, it so is very a, hard yeah. to yeah, find. Good. So we have not used it. I'm sure we it. will again. Sure. but We will uh, have to as we travel out west. Okay, I'm going to go real quick. There's about three questions in there. And uh, here's one from KK Kayak. What's your favorite RV show? Enjoy the... Uh, both of you keep up the good work. Uh, check out the Hot Springs and Big Bend. Yep. Favorite RV show, which one? Depends on which one I'm at. Tampa, then. That's what we're going to say because <laughs> we're going there. Uh, do people use Apple CarPlay in RVs? We do all the time. I love Waze. It's my go-to uh, navigation app. Uh, and I obviously, that's through CarPlay. Uh, and I use that all the time. Uh, and... Uh, Jim, on the Sprinter issue, it seems to me that Ford Transit chassis is very difficult to find. Manufacturers put all their eggs in one basket. I thought the Transit would be more popular. Just wait, Jim. It will. The new 2020 Ford Transits are just going to be starting to be shipped in January. And uh, all-wheel drive, a whole new redesign inside. Uh, really, the Ford Transit, I think, is poised to become, uh, if not second to Sprinter, maybe even eclipsing the Sprinter as the RV Chassis, small RV chassis of choice. The, the Ford Transit has some big plans, and you'll be hearing a lot more about it. We'll tell you more about it as we uh, are, as we're at the show this week, and uh, and you'll more from there. Okay, um, uh, let's see what else do we've got here. Do you like your lithium batteries? Are they worth it? We think so. Um, they're a thousand bucks each. Uh, that's a pretty good, reasonable price, but they last longer. They're better performing. They charge fuller. Um, we but it be depends happy. on how you camp. If, if you're yeah. not going to be boondocking, don't do it. Yep. You know, keep what you got. Yep, and that's it. Okay, guys, we have got to go. we got to go pack. And somebody said I looked exhausted, so maybe I do need to take a, a bit of a nap. I'm happy, though. Don't I look happy? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I really enjoy, this is like a, a virtual campfire. Yeah, I really enjoy sitting around with everybody and uh, and being with you guys. Actually, I wasn't going to stay the whole hour, but it was so comfortable sitting. <laughs> You're just up. glad to be sitting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she came home and did all of the laundry. I mean, you had it all done, and you've even wa washed some of the stuff that we, the, you know, we didn't we don't have running water in this thing in our winter camp out. I see that it's all waiting for me to take back out here because it's washed and cleaned. Yeah, got an icy uphill battle to get into the house. Yeah. All right. Hey, we're gone. We'll see you in Tampa, 3 p.m. Saturday for a live shot. If uh, if you're on YouTube, watch us then. That's when we'll do our weekly Ask Us Anything from the show. Meantime, uh, uh, we'll be doing lots of social media. Look for us on Instagram. And if uh, if you're on Instagram, follow me. There's my uh, address right there. Uh, Jennifer and I will be posting a lot from Instagram. You'll see us right there. So if you haven't already followed us, go do so right now. Uh, we'd love to have you there. 
newsletter comes out tomorrow. That little noise you heard was just a reminder for me to do my little go intro get to work. upgrade. Go do some work before I can go to bed and start packing. Uh, we, uh, we'll see you guys uh, next week. Uh, video on the Winter Camp Out next Saturday. Podcast this week is an interview with the Burkitts, our friends from Off the Beaten Path. We learn a lot about them and how every place in the country has a story and how you can find that story and, and make that a part of your RV lifestyle too. So that's all we got to say today. We are heading out of here. Thank you guys so much. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm.